out and cut to our track. We are at the 2021 Don Green Memorial Meet here in Warpark, California with Rob Dearborn. You may know him as being our CS Intersection Division II prelims meet manager. Today also the meet director. Cole Days had his mask on. He's going to go ahead and take his mask off for the interview real quick. We're socially distanced. Big question. Southern California, for the first three weekends, we may have just one other invitation other than this one within 200 miles. A lot of meat directors canceling left and right. This one happens. What helped, What led to this actually? Place of falling place. What did you need to go through? Simple, difficult? Well, I had to start with our school district and, uh, and our county health department, and they put out a you know an opportunity for us to ask for a waiver to host this meet. And first thing I had to do is get our superintendent, Dr. Kelly Hayes, involved in the process. And she's very, we, we've been a school that's been in session all year. Uh, we've had a waiver to do that, so she was fully supportive as long as we followed the guidelines. So we applied to the health department and uh, they gave us the green light. And so we're, as the uh, CIF Southern section said, we're the guinea pig for the track season. And what I think today's, today's been a great day. I would most, if not all people, uh, had their masks on in the stands, which you know was a, a, a big, big part of the process. And I think parents have really cooperated. They've social distanced. They've sat in their family groups. So I think everybody, they want a track season so bad, they're willing to do the necessary things to make it happen. Yeah, I mean, we've seen out in the community, I mean, depending on where you're at, there's, there's pretty good cooperation. It seems even stronger right here, like you mentioned, because they want to have these events and they're cooperating. So good to see. As far as the response from the kids and the coaches or the parents, have you heard much feedback about the opportunity to happen? Yeah, well, two things. Everybody that's here today is super excited about being here today and, and that they get to run a track meet. Uh, we heard from a lot of coaches that, you know, their school districts weren't on board with them coming to an invitational and they were, you know, they were really upset. And I said, well, you know, let us get this meet in and then maybe it'll open the door for you to go to another meet. But I, I think everybody's just glad to be out competing. And to me, there's no reason you can't compete in track when it's a naturally social distance sport. If we can allow football or soccer or indoor basketball, we need to have track meets. As far as track, we've seen the guidelines from the National Federation of High School State Associations. Some people have a different reaction as far as those guidelines. For your meet, have you had to do anything in addition to that? I mean, is there anything you did differently to maybe uh, help the process? Well, uh, two things. Uh, public health required that our kids got a, all kids got a COVID test. So we had to have the coaches certify their rosters that they did that. And then this, you know, the second part is just constantly remind people of today to, to do the right things. And you know, constantly you get in those old habits where you want to you're staging an event and you you have all those kids, you know, in a tight group that all our coaches reminding each other, hey, we keep asking the kids to spread out and do those things. Kids have been great. No complaints, no nobody, you know, argued on anything. They were happy to comply. So track kids by nature are great kids. I mean they just they do the right thing all the time. Touch upon one thing that was to go ahead and go over and that was I think right now a lot of coaches, a lot of kids, a lot of parents, they're looking for me saying, oh, I'm going to go ahead and do this for a chance. But the schools, the administrations are like, we need to be looking more careful. So instead of the usual 3,000, 3,500 athletes, we have like at least 564. Yep. So and that was more a case of a lot of schools, as you mentioned, saying, so, well, not quite yet. Did that surprise you that there was that much hesitation or precaution? Yeah, I was re I'm really surprised how public health has set guidelines and then it seems like every school district has a different guideline on what they're doing. Some are very, very cautious on everything they do from in-person school to, you know, sports. And then there's other districts that are a little more aggressive. So, yeah, I, I wish it was all consistent. It's not, but I, I'm an advocate for track and field. I mean, kids need to be out there. It's a safe sport. Um, there's just no reason that we're not competing, in, that everybody's competing in track and field. The, um, so you mentioned consistency, and each county, each health department has their own policies and such. Are you surprised at how many meets, how many invitationals are being canceled left and right? Does that surprise you? Yeah, it does. I think coaches are a little fearful, fearful that it was it's going to be really tough. I, today's been a great day. Now, of course, it's a lot smaller meet, but it, it's a great start. And it, 
it, it's just it's been easy to be honest it's been really easy everybody's on board everybody wants to do the right thing so I would encourage people to have meets you know you got to start somewhere it, it, maybe it's not going to be the giant meet you've had in the past but it but all track teams are smaller this year yeah. uh, our, our program went from 225 kids to about 70 kids and that is across the board I haven't found a, a school that has got a big track team so it's just going to be smaller anyways and and the kids that there's a lot of different reasons why kids do a track and field but there are those elite athletes we need to provide opportunities for them because it's it's their what they're going to do in college or maybe even far beyond that and it'd be a shame that we didn't provide those meets for them I'm talking to a lot of coaches from across the state they mentioned their rosters are down anywhere from 30 to 70 percent over a regular year the roster numbers uh, on your and for a number of reasons at Moore Park, you mentioned the, the big drop. What are some of the leading reasons why in your program they've had to go? You know, they've done. Well, I, our our student body, we have about a fourth of our students coming in person. So three fourths of our students have opted to do distance learning. That's the biggest thing. Um, you know, I, and I'm hoping that's. I think the road people are mistaken. It's going to be a tough road next year to convince kids. I think they've seen this option of staying at home and not doing school. Um, it's not a good option. They need to be here in person. The social aspect of school is just as important as the academic part. And, you know, kids need to be here in person, and sports is the lead way to that for them feeling comfortable to come back to school. You touched upon something that I think a lot of people probably still haven't realized yet. You know, people think, okay, a pandemic is it's kind of getting under control to a degree. Yeah. Things are beginning to return back to normal. I think a lot of people think next year we're, we're back to normal in terms of sports. How much damage has been done as far as roster turnout, confidence in, just in general? Is yeah, we're, we're not going to be normal next year. I think to some degree, the, you know, there's going to be COVID, it's going to be around. I think we're going to probably have masks to some degree. There's going to be some restrictions, but it's not going to be, an, I don't think it's going to be, I wish it was an overnight fix that Moore Park was going to go from 70 athletes back to 220. I don't, I would really be surprised. It's going to take some sort of strategy, which we don't have yet, on getting kids back on sports teams and getting them back in school. <laughs> Rob, last question, again, because of all the cancellations left and right, and I just sense from a lot of youth directors, they're, they're, they feel almost kind of really helpless in a sense, or they don't feel like they have like a chance. What's your message to youth directors that are maybe a month out or so? you got to be an advocate for your sport. you got to go, you got to, you know, it's a hard thing because we don't want to buck the, our bosses, but you got to go talk to them. you got to talk to your school board and say, hey, give us this opportunity. You know, our kids need it. And we're very fortunate at Moore Park, we have their support. Uh, so I really haven't had to do that, but you, you, sometimes you gotta make a few waves. You've gotta push the envelope to get us back. We're not gonna just get back to normal on our own. Coaches are gonna have to, teachers in the class, same thing, you're gonna have to push to get it back to the way it used to be. And it needs to get back to that. So once again, it's the only Invitational this weekend in the state, the only one in Southern California with the first two weekends. And as far as I know, from all CIF sports, the 564 kids today is the largest sporting event so far this year at CIF. So a big step forward. Rob Dearborn, once again, the coach of your meet director at the Don Green Invitational. Thank you very much. Thank you.